factor. So moving forward, the equities are they're either they're likely to either all move lower together or they're likely to all move higher together. That's left to be seen on the on how the market perceives this Greek bailout, and that will affect trading for essentially the rest of the week. And again, if the market continues to perceive uh, that the eurozone is going to things are going to worsen there, then what's going to likely happen is these these equities are likely to all sell off together. However, I remain somewhat confident that the Dow Jones Industrial and the Nikkei, along with the, the yen and the US dollar, will continue on their upward movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through all the currencies from a, from a medium term perspective. We're going to look at the commodities, uh, again, because the commodities and some of the, those other futures contracts are going to definitely play a part here this week. So with that said, let's, let's have a look at the Eurozone FX futures contracts and see what's happening here. We can see that from the medium term perspective, this thing is taking another big hit. Now on a medium term perspective, this is what we have to look at. Is there any uh, sign of life here that this thing is going to correct? Well, it, it doesn't appear so as of yet. So it's very important that we take this, these futures contracts into consideration. Now, again, if we take the Euro FX futures contracts, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them down here uh, side by side and we're going to put it up against one of the major uh, stock indexes that has a correlation to the euro. We can see that the correlation between the euro and the DAX 30 is extremely high. So we've got this crossover on the Euro FX futures contracts, the DAX 30 running flat here trying to push its way higher with the other global equities and then essentially a complete failure and down it goes. So it's, it's, it's important that we look at these things. Now if we were to look at this, pull this up and then we're going to look at a longer term perspective. So looking at the longer term perspective here from vantage point, on the, media, on the longer term the, the picture remains the same. We're just getting this crossover now on the DAX 30. It's moving lower. The Euro FX futures contracts, nothing has changed here. So we've got to ignore some of this market noise and focus on what we, what we actually see and what's actually the signal we're getting here. And clearly we have a, a, a sell signal on both the Euro FX futures contracts and the DAX 30. Now, again, this, this may seem confusing to some, but looking at from a, an intermarket technical analysis point of view, it's not as confusing as it may seem. We, we can see that there's a high correlation between the Euro FX futures contracts, the DAX 30, the Dow Jones Industrial, all of these things are running somewhat together, but uh, with the US dollar actually slight, the US dollar and the US dollar indices somewhat leading the pack here when it comes to strength. Now, uh, again, that's, that's looking at the Euro FX. Nothing has changed here in my perspective. Now let's go in and have a look at the Japanese yen futures contracts. Let's see what's happening here. We've crossed over in the medium to, on the medium term. We've crossed over to the downside. Now again, uh, this is uh, this is actually excuse me a longer term perspective. So let's go back in here. We've got to switch this back to our medium term crossover from vantage point. Now we're going to hit apply to all so everybody can see this. So our medium term is still pointing lower on the U, on the yen futures contracts. And looking at the short term, the short term contracts are running somewhat flat. Now, what we also want to, again, look at the Japanese yen. We want to see what's happening with the yen in comparison to those other global indices. Uh, looking at that, if we put the yen up here, we're going to bring this up again, put this up side by side so everybody can see the Japanese yen futures contracts. They're still pushing lower. Now, let's have a look at that directly against the the US dollar index and not only that the US Japan currency pair so we can see this correlation here this medium term crossover has taken place on the Japanese yen futures contracts that translated into an instant buy signal from vantage point on the dollar yen very interesting so you can see that the correlation here is a hundred percent so if we're watching these yen if we have the yen futures contracts using the vantage point software again very clear signal here. I'm in this trade. I've been buying. Anytime the US Japan has dipped lower, I've used it as a buying opportunity. When it goes up, I use the vantage point predicted highs of the day to exit those positions. And then basically, guys just re-enter the same position. They, it tends to be somewhat repetitive. It's not, it's not that attractive, but it works. So again, that's what it's about is making money, getting these positions right, and using the software. That's what I've been able to do. So Looking at the yen right now, it looks like it's going to continue to move lower. But again, we also want to look at this this Nikkei and look at this. The, if we look at the Nikkei 225 index, 
we can see here that this correlation is, pr is fairly high also. Now we've got this signal right here, we've got this crossover to the upside, it crossed over to the downside there. Now we're running this flat signal on the Nikkei, and we're, but this would suggest that the Nikkei in the medium term is going to push, could push higher. So now if that does push higher, this, this would suggest potentially that the Japanese yen futures contracts could also uh, follow. Like they'll lag behind the Nikkei by maybe a day or two, but that's a warning that the yen may actually gain strength here. So we definitely want to keep that into consideration uh, watching out the beginning of the week. Okay, now that we've looked at those two major futures, uh, currency futures contracts, let's have a look at some of these individual currency pairs. Looking at the US CAD, this is the first one we're going to start with here. The US CAD is breaking, clearly breaking higher. Now we've crossed over the medium term, it's starting to move, it's, it's, it is moving higher, but again, we've got some pretty stiff resistance up here in this 102 area. 102, 102.25 has been a very significant area. So I'm using the medium term crossover from vantage point right now to show everybody. Now let's, let's have a look at the long term crossover and see what's actually happening uh, from that perspective. Now, looking at the long-term crossover from vantage point, it may not be so willing. Well, actually it is. It's putting out a buy signal here also. Now, the U.S. CAD, the Canadian dollar specifically, is highly correlated to the equity markets. The equities push lower. The U.S. CAD, uh, the Canadian dollar, I should say, weakened with it, which translated into strength in the U.S. CAD, pushing it up higher. So if these global indices reverse and start moving higher, the U.S. CAD is likely to continue its downtrend. But to begin the week, I'm really not convinced that that's what's that is what's going to happen. Now, again, let's have a look at the triple EMA. It's always good to review the triple EMA crossover because it's not a short-term indicator. It, now, we can see that we're getting ready for a potential cross of the triple EMA crossover. If this takes place, then US CAD is likely to break significantly higher. And I don't mean a few pips. I'm talking probably the 106, 107 area. If, if it can break through and we get a good signal and the equities continue to move lower. So there's a number of factors here at play that have to happen. Happen. Looking at these different markets and all that, we need to get this triple EMA crossover complete. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, we've got the short, the medium, and the long term all confirming that it's going higher, but the triple EMA crossover has not made it yet. Now, let's also have a look at the predicted TSI from vantage point. What's happening with that? Looking at the predicted TSI from vantage point, we've crossed over in heavily oversold territory and it's moving higher with plenty of room to extend. In order for this thing to be overbought, guys, this has to hit the 25 to 30 level on this predicted true strength indicator from vantage point. So again, we have plenty of room uh, for the US CAD to extend higher. Looking at the triple EMA, 1.0070. That looks like anywhere between that and 1.0112. Very good buy area to begin the week. Stops below parity. Again, we want to give this thing room, but because of this, these issues with Greece, everything is really relying on that. Now, again, with the dollar yen, we've we've looked at the dollar yen. We're going to look at it though again using the we've identified what's happening in the short, the medium, and the long term. But we are going to look at the triple EMA crossover to identify our key levels of uh, again support and resistance and which way this thing is going. So with this, we've got this triple EMA crossover that's taken place from vantage point. Everything looks good there for this to move higher. Key levels that we want to watch for, 9336, 9369, and 9386 with the close of 9389. So to begin the week, uh, we're going to be looking at buy positions off this 9336. All stops should be below the 9250 area. Again, in most, <coughs> excuse me, in most cases, at least.